Thanks. Uh, hi, uh, late hour, and we want to go fast through the slides. Um, uh, for, uh, some words before, we are from a backend as a service company, Abiomat, uh, but we are trying to not make uh, too much uh, uh, too much things about our own. Uh, we want to tell you the story, uh, how we get here, um, how you can benefit from backend as a service. We will show you an app and how to integrate, uh, and we will show you some Android code, how to integrate uh, uh, the backend. And finally, we will show you how we did in a project and yeah, perhaps two marketing slides. Uh, we were really fast with them and warned you before, so you can close your eyes. <laughs> So uh, let's start in 2010. Who has was involved in app development in 2010? Okay. Um, who was involved in backend development in 2010? Oh, okay, quite a lot. So uh, who thought? Uh, I, I saw backend development was a pain. I tell you why. With the next slide. Um, what we did in 2010, we had MySQL and Hibernate for the uh, database and uh, object mapping uh, to the to the other layers, um, and we had proprietary protocols um, for the communication between the front end uh, and the back end side. We defined our own things and uh, pushed the data. I don't know, pushed, uh, pulled the data to the other side. We had our own servers for every app that we made. There were minimum two or three servers, uh, live systems, something for staging and something for uh, testing. We had administrators who were looking for all the servers. Um, and if we started a new project, um, yeah, we, yeah, with MySQL we had those schemas and we have to define new schemas, but we copied some code, for example, for making push notifications or for yeah, imports or all these things, so that was a little bit copy-paste. So, yeah, that, that was a little bit pain and uh, as was someone also involved in such pain, perhaps not the same tools, was it? Yeah, raise hands. Yeah, okay, some guys. Uh, so, uh, who, who has? So, we decided, perhaps to the next slide, we decided to uh, make things easier and we thought we couldn't be the only one. Uh, and who has heard uh, of backend as a service until now? Uh, who has? Okay, one, two, three, four, five. So, not too much. So, uh, yeah, let me introduce you that uh, that concept. Uh, what is uh, backend as a service? Uh, these are the guys who founded the companies. You see two of them here and uh, three others on the picture. Uh, all of us uh, are involved in uh, building apps minimum since 2009. I think Andreas started building apps, uh, backends for apps in 2005. Uh, he was one of the guys where you can uh, uh, get a ticket in the Leipzig tram with your Java ME mobile phone, <laughs> really quite a lot of time <laughs> since that. Okay, um, yeah, what what were, is the requirements for a backend as a service? So first thing uh, we wanted to prevent the developers from is all the, the server hassle, uh, the things with uh, yeah, setting up a Linux server, uh, putting in the database there, dealing around with, I don't know, load balancers, and all this stuff and making Linux updates and I don't know. Um, yeah, that's hosting included. Um, all these things, if you have backend as a service, all these things are included, and probably you won't need that admin anymore. Uh, next thing is uh, yeah, protocol. Uh, no proprietary protocols. Uh, in the last years, REST uh, uh, has uh, yeah, come to the standard, is the standard protocol for such things, and uh, normally you have a REST protocol as a uh, if you're using a backend as a service. Um, for creating, reading, and updating your data, and normally data is exchanged via JSON. Um, SDK, and uh, yeah, let me welcome Uli here. Uh, that's one thing that we've learned from him. Um, he's a front-end uh, developer, and uh, what we've learned is that the guys in the front-end uh, don't want to uh, uh, save uh, things uh, as key value pairs. Uh, they want to have uh, the same model that we have on the server side. They want to have that uh, um, also on the front end, and they don't want to uh, save key values. 
And yeah, I've learned that, or we have learned that, and uh, so we what we now do is we generate SDKs in the programming language of your front end. So we'll see that uh, on Android. On the example, we generate, uh, you define your uh, backend data model, and we generate uh, the SDK with the same data model built in there. Um, a web-based dashboard, so yeah, what we could have done would be uh, something like a Clips Rich Client, I don't know, or anything. Uh, you had those tools like uh, MySQL, but we don't want all of that uh, at the backend as a service. Everything should be accessible via a browser. So a web-based dashboard where you can also uh, look at your data and edit your data. Everything should be in the browser. Um, out of the box modules, that was the copy and paste things that we always had in the apps and uh, what we now uh, actually want is uh, having modules like Facebook integration, importing data or exporting data, um, yeah, making backups, all these uh, in out of the box modules that can be added to your backend uh, with just one click. Yeah, and last thing uh, on the top is uh, server logic. Um, yeah, we, you uh, get a lot of things done with create, read, update, delete, and the REST protocol, but uh, sometimes there are some use cases where you need some logic on the server. i give you uh, some examples for that later, uh, but um, yeah, some of the backend as a service providers uh, give you the possibility to add also a logic on the server side. Um, yeah, and that, that's so. That's the requirement for a backend as a service, from my opinion, a minimum. So now let's change over to Philip, and uh, he will show you, um, yeah, how it works uh, if if you're a developer and you uh, would like to use backend as a service in an app. Yeah. Hi. Um, because of the bad internet connection, I decide to show you only. Uh, the hacking stuff in the video and not li in the live demo but I think it's it's also okay okay what we do now um, I think we can create today a simple task manager app for Android I know there are a lot of uh, but it's a simple project and it's easy to understand okay let's start with the backend stuff we go here we have to sign up for appyourmat.com So fill in username, okay. email, password, Opa. and so on. Okay, you redirect to the login page and then log in. So here we can create our app. Um, let's call it Task Manager or Femi Task Manager. And that's the name of the app and let's add a description for better understanding okay so now the app is created and here you can see the um, app setup overview screen here you can add a new app configure your app also delete deploy the app to the, our cloud copy modules from live to test see your base URL and API key Normally you don't need it when you use the SDKs, but you can also use the REST interface and then you need this information. And you can see the state of your app. Now it's undeployed. And you can also add modules. And modules are like push, XML import, export, Facebook, and so on. This Facebook module. Okay, but we don't need it. Um, on the left side, you can see um, that we have three systems. We have a test system, a staging system, and a live system, and that are unindependent from each other. So, but you can copy your data from one to other, and vice versa. Okay, let's do it on a live system. Now we switch to classity.tab. Uh, classity.tab. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Here, let's. Here you can add your um, classes in object-oriented manner. Let's add a class called task. Okay. So, this is the class called task. You have also some basic classes, or one basic class at the moment. You can see here, that's the member model. You always need a member model to authenticate, use through the server. And yeah, your username has a username, last name, 
and some basic some basics. Okay, here you can um, set the uh, access rights for quad, also for create, write, up, read, update, delete. Um, two, three roles, guest, owner, and user. You also can inheritance, like the normal object oriented. Uh, you can inherit from memory model at the moment, why there's no other class there. Okay, let's add an attribute. You have some attributes, I don't know if you see it. You have a map, an image, a uh, normal string, numbers, um, data object. Uh, but we need in a moment only text object for our description. So add a name for description. You can also do a collection thing of that, but we need only one description at the moment. And we need a Boolean flag, but there's no Boolean, so we use number <laughs> um, from one to zero. Okay, that's all. Now we have created a class called task with two attributes, description and done. And now let's deploy it to our cloud. Yeah, you can see it, you have to deploy it. So you deploy, and the warning is disappear. So now you are ready to download the SDKs and begin with developing your app. Here, this is the SDK tab. You can see um, the generated SDKs for all the language that we are supported at the moment. That's um, Java, yeah, yeah. you can see Python, PHP, iOS and Android. You can see some sample snippets where you can copy and paste it and test some things. And you can see an example of your generated map. It's it's simple Pojo with some convenience methods. Okay, let's download the SDK. Yeah. There also was the internet not so not so fast. And it takes a while because it's generated the SDK at the moment. But now, yeah. Let's save the disk. Okay, so, and now switch to our IDE. This is Eclipse, you know Eclipse. And on the left side you can see the, the project which I prepared with some activities and some list adapters and so on. That's not the stuff that I would show you here. We are only interested in the SDK part, I think. But you also, you all know how to develop Android lists and so on. Okay, let's uh, unzip the package and copy or remove the data from your download folder to the app. Yeah, that's all the two folders at the moment. There's also an RPMAT folder in it. Come on. Okay, let's track it in the IDE to the source folder. Yeah, yeah. Okay, import. I will progression progress, yes. So, yeah, you can see the new, new folder, the front folder. There are all the generated SDKs, uh, they got all the generated stuff in. And that's all um, the, the activities and list adapters. Okay, what we do now? Let's see in the to-do list. Okay, what you do now is um, to configure um, our app with the back with the backend. We had a data store object. We had a member model. The data store object is the um, connect uh, the connection to the backend uh, to all the HTTP stuff and all the caching stuff for us. Okay. Now the member model is initialized with the username and password and you configure the data store with the this user day. Okay, let's download the user if there. I will move forward. So, here. Okay, load me async. This is a, me a convenience method also. I don't write any code at the moment. I don't write the message load me async for myself. It's from the SDK. And it's load the user credentials from the server. 
in a, in a background thread that's important in Android, you can also do uh, load me on the main thread, but that's not allowed in Android, or it's not convenience. Okay, so let's delete this and do load me as in the background. And if you're background, you must be notified um, if the server request is finished, and we do this with a callback. And the callback has a method that you have to implement it. And here I implemented the message is done. And check if the exception until like null. And if the exception if the exception occurs on the server, I um, save the user first. Of course, there's no user credentials, and so the server says, ah, yeah, I don't know it. Let's save it first. Okay, I save it. And there's also a callback method. And the next step is to download all the tasks. <coughs> this is the get task method. I'll uncomment this for you. So, okay. And uh, the market, the marked section is where we download the uh, um, tasks. Get tasks async is awesome convenience method, which has a callback, the get list callback, which you can see above. It's also a callback with a um, with a result list, which comes from server. And we also check here if exception is null, then all, all went okay. And we clear our um, list adapter, add the objects if there are any, and notify the adapter that something has changed. Yeah, that's normal Android stuff. Okay. Yeah. Go. Okay, how we save now a new task, or how we add a new task to our backend and to our list. <coughs> That's do we here in the menu handling. What we do is also save async on, uh, we create a new task object here. That's also generated task. And we add a description and it's not done yet, so we add null, uh, zero. We add it to our list adapter we notify the list adapter and we call save async to put it on the server. Also callback method, yeah, that's, let's check if the exception and show toast and then else show successfully saved or successful saved, it's a typo. Okay, let's start the emulator. Here this is bad, it's a really basic uh, Android app. You have here the, on the left side a list and on the right side a detailed screen. Okay, let's add some stuff. Yeah, come on. Okay, here, here the toast you can see successful saved. So the um, the object was sent to the server and saved. They are successful without any exception. And that's not a good name. Let's let's add a real task and. Save it again. Uh, save is also an update the server decides. If the object uh, is there, then update the object. If there are no object with this ID, then save it in the backend. Okay, that's one. Let's add another one. It's also saved successful. Uh, okay. Check and dashboard of items are there. Save it. And now let's see if the objects are really on the server. So we go back to our dashboard, our Apple my dashboard, and switch to the data tab here. And here you can see the task has two um, entries. This is the data editor of our dashboard. You can uh, create also new objects. You can delete and you, of course, can edit it. And now we have checked it, so we set it done to one. Okay, okay, so. Now it's one. Go back to our emulator, start the app again. There are all our two things. And here you can see there's a check mark. Also, it's really on the server and it's callback also. Okay, that was what I show, what show you, would show you. And over again to Lutz. Thanks. Yeah, that was a short introduction. We only showed you uh, the basic things. Uh, you can do a lot more stuff with uh, queries and make backend logic. But uh, let me uh, uh, use the time for uh, telling you about a project that we did um, when we uh, were not uh, uh, working at AppUMAT and when we worked uh, at the company that we worked before. 
Um, there was a project, you can have a look at it, it's called CityKit. Uh, there is a website, an Android app, and uh, uh, iOS app. Um, and uh, when we were talking to the clients, they had, yeah, it was difficult, clients as it's always. Um, and I was the project manager, we didn't have any back-end team at all at that time uh, available for doing such stuff. And uh, yeah, we discussed making things with AppUmart and we did it. Um, and uh, it was really uh, a complex project, CityKit, uh, yeah, let me tell you two words about it. Yeah, you can go uh, in a city, have a look at that app and can see which uh, addresses, bakeries, whatever is around, uh, which dates uh, are on the schedule tonight uh, and uh, which are offers that, I don't know, the bakery or the hotel is making and which are deals that they make. So a lot of things to do, more than 30 classes in the data models, everything was highly connected to each other. They had uh, data before, more than 1,000 objects to import via CSV files. Yeah, and um, we had uh, complexity that we had to do some server logic uh, that was, uh, for example, merging uh, two accounts. So if you use the app, you don't have to put in your credentials. Uh, you can use it, uh, save your favorites, um, and you can also do the same thing on the tablet and on the phone. And if you then say, okay, I want to sync those, um, I'll put in my uh, email address on both, and then they have to be synced, and the syncing had to be on, done on the server. Um, and uh, the other thing was uh, when you uh, use the deal or you save the deal, then uh, you can only save that for two hours, and after two hours they have to be released. Yeah, and that could also couldn't be done on the client, so that also had to be, uh, be done on the server. And the uh, uh, interesting thing was that without having a backend team, there was an IRS developer um, who has to do, uh, had to do the backend, and he completely did it on his own, and he didn't install Eclipse or something else. He did it all on the website. And it worked uh, out perfectly. And if we go to the next slide, here yeah, we can have a look. Um, there are the apps, Android, iOS, and you see the website and the back end. Uh, so we used uh, four SDKs, the Android SDK, the iOS SDK, the PHP SDK for the website who wasn't developed by us, who was developed by another company. And uh, we also used the plain Java SDK for Google Web Toolkit uh, dashboard for inserting the data. So uh, there were four SDKs used, and we started, I don't know, with five or ten classes in the beginning and the back end, and so there were a lot of iterations, always changing the data model on the server side, and always if something changed, we didn't do any big documentation or that. We only said to the, to the front end guys, hey, just go into and download a new SDK, and so they always had the actual SDK with all the data models in there, and they know what to do, and there were only two or three lines of documentation if something changed. So that really saved us a lot of time, not only having no backend team, but, only ha uh, but also have uh, uh, less communication uh, overhead. Yeah, and that's, uh, now please uh, close your eyes if you don't want to see marketing. Uh, backend as a service is, uh, yeah, with uh, that things uh, much cheaper uh, than self-made backends. And uh, go to the next slide. Yeah, and uh, that's uh, what differentiates us from the competitors. Um, if you uh, have a look at the market, and probably you will if you're interested in that, uh, you will see some uh, some other guys. And um, what uh, what we think is uh, special about us, we host in Germany, uh, and yeah, as we have talked to a lot of people for using that thing, uh, many clients uh, yeah have. Uh, have the requirement that the data has to be in Germany. Uh, we offer service level agreements for all paid plans uh, that you normally don't get without being a big enterprise. And we have those generated SDKs uh, that we've talked a, bit, a lot about. <laughs> okay. So that's uh, what we wanted to talk about. Uh, you feel free to contact us and feel free to ask questions. <laughs>